hi everybody if you're new here welcome to my channel my name is liz aka knife girl or maybe i can say welcome back if you're coming from one of my other videos this video that i'm doing today is gonna be a bit of fun i somewhat recently got into crochet and kind of yarn crafts through my sister she was really into it for a while and i was visiting her and decided to see what all the hubbub was about so i borrowed some of her yarn and crochet hooks and just started going for it so i thought for this video i would rate everything that i have made thus far so if you're interested in crochet maybe wanted to get started or maybe just looking for something fun and silly to watch then i am your person keep on watching so just a little context before I get started. Some of these items that I was going to present I do not have because I gave them to people as presents. A lot of my friends who had birthdays this year got uh, something crocheted by me. But I do have some pictures so we can go off the pictures. Some of the items I do have so I guess let's get into it. So the very very first thing I crocheted was just a little block and that was mostly just for practice so I'm not necessarily going to count that because that wasn't like a real project. So my first real actual project that I came into with a concept was this. It's a little mini backpack kind of like a tote bag meets backpack. It's got these kind of robin's egg blue straps, black yarn, and these flower embellishments on here which weren't the original embellishments. I'll get into the story. This, along with a lot of the other things that I've made, I didn't use a pattern. I just kind of got the fundamentals. I learned how to work straight stitches and do essentially a square or rectangle, and I learned to work in the round. So this was my first, I think, venture working in the round. So I essentially started with a circle and kind of uh, increased it to the desired size and then I just kept working up until it was a good height. It's kind of hard to see because it's black and my background is dark. And then yeah, I kind of ended up with this bucket shape and I kind of on the fly learned how to make handles just by chaining a little gap and then continuing to go around and working till these handles had a little bit more heft to them. It took me probably about altogether like three days of just straight crocheting. It's it's just single crochet like I know you can't see the detail but it's very basic. And then for the embellishment I had the idea originally to just kind of like embroider some designs on so I kind of still have the remnants of that. I have that little thing this weird little star thing. I was like, oh cool, that's all right, but not great. So eventually I kind of learned how to make these flowers and I thought, oh, the flowers are way better. <laughs> so then I stuck on a bunch of flowers in this sort of abstract kind of pattern. This is the only thing I've made with a lining. I did intend to have several things with linings, but that didn't work out because of time constraints and energy or rather a lack of energy but this one actually has a lining made out of bandanas and it has a zipper and this is actually the first time I've ever worked with a zipper so you can zip it totally closed I've always known how to hand sew but I am not the most skilled hand sewer so my stitches are pretty uneven and honestly, I didn't have a great method for sewing the lining into the bag, so it's very rough. But I didn't mind so much because it was just going to be my thing. If I was giving it to someone, I would maybe put a little bit more effort and care into making it neat and nice. But I didn't because it was kind of just like a first project for fun. For my straps, I kind of, I attached them in this kind of X pattern which I thought might give it a little bit more stability and strength. The straps are adjustable, which is, I thought, pretty cool. And I found this black hardware, I think at Joann's or something, that matched. And so I kind of tried to make sure that everything was very secure and solid, which I think it is. Like, I wore this at Thanksgiving because I thought it would be autumnal, and I think it went okay. So my rating for this 
because it was my first project and it does have a lot of flaws I think I used a lot of creativity and overall I like it like I'm I've worn it and I will continue to wear it so overall I think I would give this a six out of ten I think it loses points because if I had to do it again I would do these straps at more of a steep angle because the way this is is not super natural to hang on your back and then I might also try to reinforce these little handle straps a little bit more because they do kind of stretch a bit well I like the embellishment I think it's weird and quirky and cool this kind of gave me like it gives me like homeschool homemade vibes which is definitely an aesthetic but I like it so overall six out of ten so the the second thing that I made was kind of a, a twofer. I'm gonna count it as a twofer because I had two friends whose birthdays are in the fall. One's in September and one's in August. They're very close together. I made them both a little crochet bag. I'm gonna count it as kind of one project. I had this idea where I could ask my two friends to pick a shape that they liked and to pick their favorite color. And my one friend picked a yellow triangle and my other friend picked a blue circle. That's what I intended to do. Neither of them worked out as originally intended, but you know, happy accidents, things work. The first one, so they asked for a yellow triangle. My intention was kind of to make like a triangle-ish sort of kind of drawstring pouch which I think I kind of accomplished although maybe towards the end it was looking more like an upside down mushroom but either way um so I started in the round this photo here is what I kind of ended up with the base shape and I got inspiration from a different bag that I have so I kind of copied the straps off of that so this one I'll include a little video here you can see it can either be worn as a crossbody or it can be worn as a backpack um, and then I added a little drawstring closure from uh, some little sash cord and the second one they asked for a blue circle so I found this really nice night sky blue yarn and I had intended to just do two flat circles about maybe this big join them with a little panel going all the way around so you would kind of get like a little circle backpack like kind of think like Ramona flowers but it was going to be a backpack it was going to be really cute as I was doing the first circle it was becoming more of a dome than a flat circle I asked my sister because she's more of a crochet expert and I was like why does this keep happening and basically she said sometimes they just do that and there's not really anything you can do aside from maybe taking it all out and starting again and I did try a couple times I took it out and I started again because I was like maybe I wasn't counting my stitches right doing the increases in the circle maybe something was wrong but it just kept doing that no matter what I did so I kind of gave up on that original concept because I thought if I continued with that it would be like a it would it just seemed weird to me so I kind of pivoted and I kept that original circle that I made and then additionally I made just kind of another little bucket type of thing um, with the aim of turning it into kind of a more traditional like drawstring backpack the kind that has the little flap over it so here's a picture unfortunately I couldn't find a picture with the straps all attached to it because I don't I don't know why but I had some really nice gray straps and a matching gray little drawstring and I think it turned out pretty well that one was a lot more work though just sewing the pieces on but overall I think it turned out really great so lumping those two projects together I think I would give them a 5 out of 10 because ultimately they did turn out all right and the people who received them seemed pretty happy with them. But I do know obviously mistakes were made, issues were discovered, and uh, <laughs> I did my best to kind of turn it into something interesting and cool. But at the end of the day, I wasn't the most happy with them. It's a learning process. Those were literally like the second and third thing I've ever crocheted. My next thing was also a gift for someone's birthday. I was just at Joann's and found a couple things of yarn on sale and I thought they were like a really pretty color. So I bought them not having any project in mind for them. So I just did a little panel. I kind of chained until I got the desired kind of width. And then I just kept going back and forth with my rows until I got the desired length. And then I folded it over, sewed it together, and so I got a kind of a little envelope shape. So here's a progress picture here 
um, I got this kind of idea to add these little scallops on the end of the flap, which I think turned out really cute. I think that was a really good idea. I had also just learned how to make flour, so I thought a little flour would just be a real simple but cute embellishment. It kind of gives the bag like Y2K vibes, and I think that aesthetic kind of matches the person who was receiving it for a present. So I think it turned out really well. I sewed on a little strap. Um, you'll notice for a lot of these bags, I use the same black strap material because I just um, purchased a big roll on Amazon and I'm like black it matches everything we'll just go with black um, but I think it turned out really cute it's got an adjustable crossbody strap and it actually goes pretty long that's one thing I I look for in crossbody bags for myself I'm a bigger person so I like them to be long enough some people are obviously smaller and don't need it that long but that's why you have the option it fit being adjustable it was a like a cute little color I think the flower complements the kind of purple really nicely. The only issue with that one was that I was getting a lot of curling so I tried my best to kind of flatten it out and I would rate that one. I think I'm gonna rate this one an 8 out of 10. I'm taking off points because the creativity wasn't as strong as some of my other projects but I think the execution was really great. It was really simple, cute. I think it was a great little present. Kind of in the midst of all these first four projects, I learned how to make flowers, which then I used as embellishments for several of the bags. And I learned a couple variations of flowers. First, I learned this kind that you can kind of see here, right here. I learned how to make these kind with just a big open center. That was the kind of flower I was making for a while. That's the kind of flower that is on this bag and also on the little purple bag. Then I found a tutorial for a slightly more advanced kind of flower, which is this that I've put on these earrings. It's kind of a hard color to see, but it has a little bit of a more defined center. So then this flower is the kind that I've been making most recently and the kind I've just been making ever since. Um, but then I decided to add one little element of embellishment, which were these little plastic snaps. I just found them on Amazon and I thought they worked really well as a little center, a little you know the center of the flower and I think they kind of made it more cohesive and cute. I've been using the flowers as embellishments for things and most recently I've been making a ton of earrings like this in just a bunch of colors. Maybe here I can put a picture of some of the colors that I've made. They're really fast to make and really fun. I was doing some crocheting at work a lot when I was working the night shift because the night shift can just get really slow, as I'm sure you know if, if anyone watching this has ever or does work the night shift. I was making a lot of earrings because I really love earrings. If you'll stick around on my channel, you'll see I'll probably wear a lot of crazy earrings. And side note, there may be a good chance I have an Etsy shop set up where you can buy some of these flower earrings. Don't quote me on that because I've been having a lot of trouble finding the motivation to do all the work that it takes to set up that Etsy shop again. Been planning to restart it again, so maybe by the time you watch this, the Etsy will be up and running, who knows? And maybe you can buy some if you want. So for my rating, I'm just gonna rate the flowers as a whole. I will give them a nine out of 10 because I think at this point, I've kind of perfected the execution of them. I think with the little snap center, they look really cute. And I think as earrings, they work. They're fast, they're easy to make, and you can do a lot of colors. And I have a lot of fun making them. So I realized as I was editing the video that I actually forgot one. This is a bag that I made out of my leftover yarn from a couple different projects. It's just a drawstring, it's a backpack, and then the closure is actually part of the straps as well. As you can see, the straps kind of tighten down to this backpack. And I think it's cute, the colors turned out really cute. As far as a rating, I think the construction was really good for just being kind of like a spur of the moment like project to use at my scraps. I think the creativity for the design is pretty interesting. So overall, I'd give this one an 8 out of 10. Now, <laughs> this is I think the most fun thing. As I mentioned, I was making crochet projects for people for birthday presents and one of those was for my boyfriend and he is a 
writer and he is currently working on a novel in which one of the characters is a talking pig. So one of the things I learned how to make was a little crochet pig. So this is the one that I made for him. This is not the first one I made. This is one of the later ones I made. I think altogether I've made about 20 or 30 pigs because once I started making them, I just had so much fun. So I thought I would show you a few of the pigs, but I will obviously view all the pigs as one project. So this is my first pig. I call him struggle pig because obviously I was learning. I've never done like a pattern before. So I don't know if you can see his ears are not really connected and also they're kind of backwards. He's a little floppy because he is stuffed with paper towels <laughs> because I made him at work. His eyes are just weird bits of yarn sewn on. He's He's not the prettiest, but he has a lot of personality and I love him because he is my struggle pig and he was the first. He was my firstborn child and he's got a cute little curly tail and his, he's got his little leggies and he, but he's a little, little misshapen, but that's okay. He, he's just the struggle pig. I had a lot of fun with the struggle pig. I think this is probably one of the, maybe not the second one, but one of the, you know, next ones I made. Um, as you can see, a lot better. The ears are now connected. The, I figured out the pattern. I figured out what the issue was. Slightly later iterations of the pig, they turned out, he turned out well. He's still stuffed with paper towels and he still has, these eyes are drawn on with Sharpie. Pigs were getting better. I was having a ton of fun making the pigs. I have many more pigs. I gave one to each of the other managers at work, there's like five or six managers. I gave them each a pig. I gave the PAs three pigs for all of them because there's like 30 PAs. So making 30 pigs was crazy. I called them emotional support pigs. These were some later inter iterations of my pigs. These are my ketchup and mustard pigs. I just kind of used some random yarn to make them some just dollar store yarn. And these actually have actual stuffing. They have actual real eyes. If you can see, they have, you know, safety eyes. This was one of my, one of my last pigs. This is the actual one that I gave my boyfriend. He has, I don't know if you can see, he has green eyes because another character in his book has green skin. So I thought the green eyes would match. He's pink like a pig. He's one of my best. Uh, yeah, I think altogether I've made about 30 something pigs. I love them. I thought they were so cute. I thought the pattern was super easy to make and I will link it uh, below. It was just a free pattern from Ravelry. It was really easy as someone who was not the best at following patterns. It was super easy and fun. And now I have all these pigs and I call them my emotional support pigs. I'm gonna rank the pigs a 10 out of 10 because they're cute and adorable and small and easy and fast. You can make them in like 30 minutes and they're really cute and perfect and I love them in every way and they're amazing. So after the pigs, <laughs> I was on a roll of making presents for people that I love. So I have two that are essentially the same bag, just using different yarn, but I kind of used the same concept. Again, didn't use a pattern for them, but they're essentially the same bag. They were just a long panel that I sewed into a little block and I sewed some straps on and I sewed a little closure on. So here's a picture of one with some pretty blue yarn I gave to one friend at work, not for any occasion other than we both were just having kind of a hard time at work and I thought maybe that might cheer her up. And then here is another one I made and I sent this to a friend of mine who is out of town. These I think were cute because you can also wear these as like a crossbody or kind of a tote bag and it converts also into a little backpack. They were both I think pretty happy with them. For this yellow one, it was, I didn't do any intentional stripes. It was just the, the yarn is like this color changing yarn, which this is the same yarn, but in a different colorway. It's very cool. And it's actually pretty cheap from Joann's. I'll link that below because I really like that yarn. Let's see, for both of those bags, I will give them, I'll give them a nine out of 10 because I think execution turned out pretty well. Concept, while not the most creative, I think I did use a little creativity in making them convertible. My concept for how to make it closure by just kind of sewing two straps on and using the little buckle as a way to keep it closed was pretty interesting. So I had used that yellow and pink yarn that was really beautiful and I found a bunch of other colorways in that same yarn, including this beautiful teal pink purple. So 
I just made this tote bag. It's just a legitimate little tote bag and it has some longer straps because for me, I enjoy tote bags that have longer straps. Kind of made this with someone in mind, but then I never ended up giving it to them. So now I'm kind of just holding on to it in case I need maybe like a little last minute like gift for somebody. I use just one of those little plastic snaps that I've been using on my flowers. I use that as like a closure. And it's pretty much, it's just a little tote bag. But I think if I could do this one again, I would put the straps on the inside just so they're not quite so obvious on the outside. Overall, I'd give this one, I think a seven out of 10. The design is pretty simple, but the color is the real statement. The beautiful teal going into the pink and purple is the, the showstopper here. And I think just a simple tote bag kind of showcases that pretty well. Execution could be a little better. The straps, are pretty sturdy but a little wonky they're a little uneven i think for those slight construction issues i'd give it a 7 out of 10. and my next one this is one that i started and then kind of gave up on and then eventually came back to but it's actually using that exact same yarn as the last tote bag but i was intending to make a backpack out of it using the same method that I used for this one and just starting a circle and then, you know, working my way up from there. However, this is one of those yarns where it did the same thing that the blue yarn did, where it just wouldn't make a flat circle. If you can see, it's kind of got this weird like protrusion where it just like, no matter what I did, it wouldn't stay flat. And I thought it would look really weird as a backpack. So I pivoted and I ended up turning it into this crossbody satchel type of thing. And it's got um, a drawstring, a drawstring closure with this little, I don't know what you call this thing, you know, these things. This one does not have an adjustable strap, but I figured if I or whoever I end up giving it to wants to adjust it they can just tie a knot and do it like that you can wear it a bunch of ways which i think is kind of interesting but you can kind of wear it open like a little bucket bag or something like a little shoulder bag or you can untie it and wear it as just like a crossbody i wasn't sure if i was gonna maybe try to sell it or give it to somebody this one was really just a flying by the seat of my pants kind of project but i think it turned out pretty cute kind of like that i finished it with this purple right on the top thought that was a cute little accent and then this the stripes just look really cute on it i think i will give this a 7 out of 10 because I think I was creative with pivoting and turning it into something else even though it wasn't working as what it was originally intended for. Execution was decent on this. I don't think I had any huge glaring issues but as far as projects it's not the most interesting. Again I was just kind of relying on the colors of the yarn to be the showstopper and I feel good standing by that rating. I had the idea that I really wanted to make a cardigan because I like cardigans. I like cozy things. I like being warm. So I bought this pretty yarn. Well first I found a pattern on Ravelry that Root was asking for super bulky yarn. I bought a lot of it because it said you needed about 10 to 15 skeins of yarn for this cardigan. But what I didn't realize is the cardigan was asking for skeins that were about 155 yards of yarn and these that I bought were only 44 yards. I did I think one row of the pattern and almost ran out of yarn just doing that one row and I was like there's no way I'm gonna make a cardigan with you know I don't have enough. <laughs> if I had bought more it would have been like a $200 cardigan and I'm like no I don't want to do that. So again I pivoted and I made something else that I kind of been wanting to make which was a hood just to keep your head warm. You know, it's kind of like a balaclava, but not so tight on your face. Maybe I can hold, let's see if I can put it on without um, <laughs> messing up my makeup. Oh no, I'm gonna do this. Oh my God, I feel ridiculous. I didn't have a pattern for this. I kind of just, again, was flying by the seat of my pants. I mostly just did another panel and then I sewed it all together on one side and I sewed this little bit together so that I would have a hole for my head. It's very thick and very cozy. I think if I lived in a winter place, I would use this a lot. Let me take it off. I intentionally kind of gave it this, it's kind of got a ribbing to it, which I thought aesthetically would just be a little bit more interesting than plain old, you know, flat crochet. It's got a little stretch to it. It's got a little give, but the yarn is very thick and beefy. Don't ask me why I 
made this or why I thought I needed this because again I live in LA where it's very rarely cold and it never rains and it's mostly sunny and hot all the time but it was just something I wanted to try making. I would give this a 7 out of 10. I think if I were to do this again I would alter it a little bit so it's not quite as tight around the neck although you do kind of want that so it holds its shape around your head and keeps you warm. I don't think I had many construction issues if I did it again to kind of round out this back corner so you don't have so much of an elf point on your head. So this is the most recent thing that I've made. Um, I ended up using that exact same colored yarn because I still had some left because I bought 15 of them. This one is another tote bag. I made this for my boyfriend's mom for Christmas. Pretty basic. It's just your basic average tote bag. Although I made it and I thought, well, this is a pretty blue color, but it could use a little pizzazz. So I just made a bunch of flowers. Here's a progress picture. I just did the periwinkle flowers at first and then I thought that wasn't quite enough. So I added the pink ones as just to fill a little bit more space. And I think it turned out well. I didn't actually use a closure on this one because I think my little plastic snaps that I have would not be beefy enough because this is very thick. I took my own inner criticism from the last tote bag. I connected the straps on the inside. It's very hard to see because it's a dark blue and it's black. From the outside you get kind of you get more of this kind of seamless look. Hopefully she likes it. I don't think it's gonna stretch too much where it'll be an issue. Like structurally it still feels fine. If someone made me this as a Christmas present I would be pretty happy. Overall, I'd give this probably a 9 out of 10. I think it's visually pretty interesting with the flowers. The construction is really good and the concept is, I mean it is just a tote bag so it's not the most creative concept, but I didn't want to get too out there. So that's it guys. Those are all the things that I have crocheted this year in the year 2022. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and just hanging out with me while I reminisced about all the things that I crocheted. Me pigs. Let's be honest, the pigs are the greatest thing that I've done in a long time. If you did enjoy this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. I am going to try very hard to do more fun videos like this. I have some ideas in mind, so I think you would enjoy yourself if you stuck around and checked out some other videos. With that being said, have a great holiday season, have a great new year, and I will see you on the next one. Bye friends!